So then for the final part of this video tutorial, we're going to look very quickly at returning more than one thing from a function. So we saw in the first unit on functions that um, as soon as you hit a return statement in the function, uh, control is passed back to whatever called the function and whatever value is in the return statement is passed back, but no other lines of code after that will happen. So what happens if we want to pass more than one thing back from the function? We can't use multiple return statements because as soon as you hit the first return statement, control is passed back and there's no chance for it to run any of the other return statements. So to demonstrate this, we're going to change the example we've just had. And instead, let's change the function. So instead of returning just the sequence, it's also going to return the length of the sequence as well. So obviously this is a bit of an artificial example because it's dead easy to calculate the length of a sequence, but it will go and demonstrate how to go about doing it. So our new function is going to look like this. So it's the same basic structure of the function with the same uh, def line, so the same positional parameter and keyword parameters. The logic inside the loop is all the same. The only thing that is different is in the return line. Now as well just returning sequence, we also are going to return the length of that sequence. And so you can see how we do that is to only do return one value, comma, next value. And you could carry on and have comma a third value, comma a fourth value, and so on. And so then we call that function like this. So when we call it, we call it with two variables equals the function. So in this case, we've called it so that fib and fib length is equal to the result of calling the Fibonacci sequence function. And you see the two variables are written again separated by commas. And so what happens is the first return value is placed in the first variable and the second return value is placed in the second um, variable. If the number of return values and the number of variables don't match, then you're going to have an error. So you can see in this case what happens, and we can show that's what's happened because we print it out and say here's the sequence and that it was 11 elements long. So technically what's actually going on here is that we're not returning multiple values. We're still just returning just one value. But that one value is a tuple which has two elements in it. And we're then using a little trick of Python that says if you are assigning a tuple, I can assign it to multiple variables at the same time. So you can't do this um, uh, with lists so easily, but with tuples it works. So you can say here's a tuple of two things and I'm going to assign it to um, the, these two variables. Um, so it looks like we're returning two values and we're assigning it to two variables in the return. But actually, as I say, we're returning a tuple of um, two elements and then we're assigning that tuple by element to two different variables. And we can show that's what's going on by instead of assigning it to two variables, just assigning it to just one and saying, well, what is this one variable we've got? So we're doing the same function call, but we're now just returning it to fib result. And what you see here is what you get is a tuple. And what's in that tuple is, first of all, a list, which is our Fibonacci sequence. And then the second element is number 11, which is the length of the, of the sequence. So in that way, we can show that what we've actually done is passed back the tuple. Um, but then uh, on the previous iteration, we were assigning it to both the uh, fib and fib length variables all in one go. So um, notwithstanding that kind of complication, it actually, when you write it out, it looks quite natural that you're um, returning multiple values and you're assigning them to multiple variables. So it sort of just works and you don't need to worry too much about the technical details of what's going on underneath. And you'll find that um, a lot of the functions you may be using in your coursework competing to are written to return more than one thing. Uh, and you'll need to read the documentation to understand how many return values they have and what they mean. And then when you call them, you'll be returning, you'll be calling them and having it put the different values into different variables. So in summary, in this unit, we've talked um, a lot about passing data into functions. Um, when we talk about passing data into functions, we talk about it um, in the call as being the arguments that are then being matched up to the function's parameters. There are two sorts of parameters in a function. There are positional parameters, 
which appear first in the death line and they're assigned values simply based on the order in which the arguments are passed to them. And then there are keyword parameters and those have a default value set to them in the def line and they are filled either with any spare positional arguments that are left over when you've dealt with the positional parameters or by matching keyword arguments where you say this keyword argument keyword parameter should have this value this parameter should have this value and so on um, uh, and so you can set a particular keyword parameter and those keyword arguments don't have to be in the same order as the keyword parameters were defined in whereas the positional arguments do have to be in the same order because they're assigned to my position and then at the end we also talked about um, returning more than one value supplying multiple values separated by commas on a single return line and then you can assign those to multiple variables um, when you call the function